Hi everybody, and welcome to the channel. Today we'll be playing a 4 color Slogurk Legends list. The goal of this deck is to get a lot of material onto the board so that we can reduce our legendary channel land costs and take over the game through overwhelming value. The deck revolves around three main cards, Slogurk the Overslime, Inti Seneschal of the Sun, and Rona Herald of Invasion. Slogurk enables our legendary lands since it allows us to recur them, as well as becoming a threat itself that we can swing in for lethal trample damage. Inti provides value by exiling cards every time we discard something, and Rona provides us with the discard outlet, which, alongside with the discard aspect of the legendary channel lands, really makes Inti go over the top sometimes. For our removal, we use Cut Down, Go for the Throat, and Urtai Resurrected. Urtai Resurrected is especially good in this deck because we could abuse its uh, little clause on its ability that says Counter Target Spell, Activated Ability, or Triggered Ability. So we can eventually start recurring Urtais using Takenuma along with Slogurk, and really take over a game, preventing your opponent from resolving anything. Another key card for this deck is Relic of Legends, which essentially turns half her deck into mana rocks, and synergizes especially well with Rona, since even if she has summoning sickness, we can still tap her with a Relic of Legends, and start getting value from her the turn we play her. And the final key piece of the deck that I've briefly mentioned are the Legendary Channel Lands. We run 4 times Odawara, as well as Takenuma, 2 times Sokensan, and one Buseju in the main board, alongside one in the sideboard. These all provide tons of value, especially when we have three or more legends on the field, where most of these will only be costing one mana. The sideboard of the deck consists of some additional interactions, such as Cutdown for any decks with a bunch of small creatures, Disdainful Stroke to prevent their opponent from resolving any high costed spell, Unlicensed Hears to mess up any graveyard synergies. It also has some ways to disrupt the opponent's hand, running two copies of Duress and two copies of Pilfer, which can prove invaluable to just completely mess up certain game plans. We also have an additional copy of Titania for additional healing. Two copies of Jace as an alternate win con, which is especially good into the domain matchups. One copy of Gix's Command to have a board wipe. A copy of Beseju, if we really need some sort of way to either destroy the opponent's non-basics or to destroy their artifacts or enchantments. And finally, we have a copy of Breach to really go over the top in the matchups that we needed. I hope you enjoyed the video, and don't forget to drop a like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Game 1, on the draw. We don't quite have enough mana to cast a Rona here, so we'll look to Mole. This is looking better. Double Takanuma is a bit awkward. I think we'll put one of those back. Nice, we can answer the Rot Priest with Cut Down. Got that off the board as early as possible. Seems our opponent will be playing. Bant Toxic with a turn 2 Crawling Chorus which will answer pretty well with Rona there seems to be a hold that could indicate a March of Swirling Mist no place from the opponent we hit land that's always good And we're going to look to get on the board with Slogurk here, but first let's draw a discard with Rona. Getting rid of the backup relic, which they won't, they'll most likely not remove. And we'll play out Slogurk. No counter from the opponent. And we pass it over. It's important in this matchup to just play as defensively as possible because they can pretty much win the game from out of almost nowhere. So unless you have a 
board state that they just can't counter in any possible way. You want to refrain from going for the win too early. So we do see a swirling mist. This is pretty good for us. Get rid of the backup Rona. At least they didn't use that on their own creatures, which would have meant four more poison counters. Might have been better to save that to use like that, but we'll see what other stuff our opponent has in their deck. Here we'll play the Glissa using mana from Rona. Rona untaps. And we'll pass it over to the opponent. We're looking to find an Inti here, so we can really start piling on on the value. Fading Hope on our Glissa. And they put a card on top. Swing with the team. They'll buff up their creature here. But that's alright. We find a Goose Mother, which should take over the game next turn. We see the Inti one turn later. And we'll opt to play that alongside the Glissa, since it means more blockers that are harder to deal with for them. Pass it over. Annex entry. Still no great attacks from opponent. Swing with both here. They take out my Slogurk. And we'll play out the Goose Mother for X equals 3. Which should prove a pretty difficult uh, creature for them to attack into. However, they still have the Merrix to start generating tokens. So we should hope to find some sort of card advantage card pretty soon. Here they swing in for three more poison. Still not the end of the world. At least, it may, at least it means no Merrick's from them. Now we could swing in with Inti here, discard the land and try and find something better. Because now we're facing a top deck from them. I guess they can't swing with the Annex because that brings back Glissa. So these are their only two real attackers, both of which we can deal with. So we'll just hold up the land. If they find removal of some sort, we're also holding up the Plaza of Heroes. Sweet. Nothing from the opponent. So we'll just let it pass to us. Finding a Titania. This is an excellent blocker. And it's looking like our opponent's just going to use their Merrick's on end step. Which is fine by me. We see a Charge of the Mites instead to finish up the game. So blue-white with a splash for Roth Priest. Kicks his command lines up well. So does Besaju, seeing as most of their playables are artifacts or enchantments. Pilfer and Duress, as well as Cut Down, all uh, interact with a lot of their early plays. And we'll look to cut Titania, whose life gain doesn't help us as much, as well as Goose Mother. Along with the Urtai, since we don't necessarily be, want to be trading one for one all that often. Or one for two, that is. And we'll cut a Relic.
So for this matchup, we're just looking to get on the board and prevent any attacks with solid blockers. Turn mode Ashnod here is pretty great. We're hoping to draw turn 2 play, but having the Relic Legends on turn 3 into holding up Gix's command turn 4 hopefully answers whatever board state they put up. Crawling Chorus. We'll play our land and pass it over. Our opponent has Island and Thicket. And yeah, we'll look to play Relic of Legends here into a Pilfer. Perhaps the opponent has a Counterspell. They opt not to use it. But they'll probably use it here against Pilfer. Should have probably countered the Relic of Legends. Bring the ending. And the Nanic Sentry. Taking out our Relic. Can this only hit creatures? Nope. So from here, Relic of Legends doesn't have as much upside. I think it's best to just hold up the cutdown, let them think they have a good attack next turn, and block them out. So we'll hit Annex Entry here. Block the chorus and use the pause of heroes to protect our Ashnod. Putting us in a pretty good spot. Scrolf. Had they had a counter spell, I think they would have used it into our cut down. Actually, no, since we would have just been able to pay for it, so I might still have it. If we play Plaza here, we still wouldn't be holding up mana to prevent the counter spell, so I think it's best to just play our tap land. We see Disdainful Stroke, kind of interesting. We didn't really show any spells with mana value four or more last match, so that's a pretty good choice of a card to put in if they know our deck list very well. Sokanzan's a great draw. We could use this to make two blockers to deal with the scrub here. And it's looking like the whole Tap their scroll to give their might pro black, which will run them right into our Sokens on. This might be Charge of the Mites. March of Sorling Mist instead. Resolves, sure. They still have two blockers they'll have to deal with somehow. Good thing about these creatures is that they're colorless, so they can't prevent blocks with Skrulf. And getting an Inti onto the board is excellent since starting next turn we'll hopefully start getting value out of her. We're holding up Plaza here, since we could tap her legends for mana. Oh, we don't even need to tap them. March of Swirling Mist. Number two. Yeah, well, doesn't really matter if we use the plaza since it'll just force them. Oh, actually, it, oh no, we can't target our spirits, so we'll just let that resolve. Our opponent would still be able to just tap Scrawl in. 
give it protection from whatever blocker we hold up. So one tap, get rid of scroll while they're tapped out. And now we should be at a pretty good spot. Opponent loses pretty much all of their, this is an interesting attack. They've lost pretty much all their aggression by losing that scroll. Seed core is okay. We find the second inti. We'll swing in with the spirit since we don't have a scroll to worry about anymore. Discarding the backup inti. Hopefully getting some value right here, which we do with a sweet Rona pickup. We'll play her out and continue to hold the plaza. Opponent will Serum Snare the Rona and I will activate Plaza here since that will otherwise give them a proliferate which we want to avoid. So that's one definite proliferate I can avoid right here. Opponent swings in with the token. We'll black with Ashnod. Seeing as even if they buff up with a seed core, the death touch will take care of the token. And hopefully now we can really start going wild with the Inti and Rona. So let's start off by drawing and discarding. You get rid of the plaza, but that means we can get Slogurk on the field, which is really important. And from here, we'll just hold up our blockers. Perhaps it would have been right to keep the plaza in case they have another serum snare or some sort of removal that screws us up, but I think that's pretty unlikely. We draw discard on end step since that allows us to play the exiled card during our turn, which is a plaza of heroes. Excellent. And this should be the game. We'll just hold up blockers here pretty permanently and hopefully avoid some proliferates till we find a board state where we could just swing in. We'll draw discard. Discarding land. And thus we start going the Slogurk. Find a relic. We could discard Odawara here, but we'll just keep holding it up. Draw discard with Rona. Get rid of land. We'll just play out the Sokens on. Play out the relic. And keep holding up our spells. opponent has Fading Hope, that's alright, Strice to the bottom, good looks. And they have something else, not Charge of the Mites, not March of Swirling Mist, perhaps a protection spell? Odawara. We'll respond to that. Ooh, perhaps. No, we'll respond to that like this. We'll tap three and target in T with the plaza, ensuring we have two blockers of different colors on the board, while also still holding up the Odawara. Our opponent will not swing in. Cool. So now we could really start wrecking some havoc. We'll bounce our scroll. Exiling Ashnod. Cool. We'll take our turn. Start by draw discarding with Rona. Discard the land to grow Slogurk. Uh, 
I believe we're out of plazas. Yep. So might be wise to grab Slogurt back up so as to grab that plaza from the graveyard. As well as the Sokanzan and the Odawara. So we'll play out the plaza, draw a discard with Rona, get rid of this, sure. Play out the Ashnod, draw a discard with Rona, get rid of the Slogurk. Play out this backup inti so as to untap the Rona. And just hold up a bunch of stuff. From here, I think it's safe to swing with the NT. Because this way we'll have um, enough damage on the board next turn to finish it out while still holding up stuff like the Plaza and the Rona. We'll pass it over to the opponent. They draw planes, play out Scrove again. No attacks. Oops. Tap this for red for the Zokens on. Tap this for black. Further go for the throat, taking care of the job on duelist, which they'll protect with the Serum Snare. But we'll tap our Slogurk for blue to bounce their duelist. That should be enough for lethal. Yep, that's right about 13. Here we'll slot Urtai back in. Double Urtai. Go down on go for the throat. That should be good. I think it was a mistake to board out Urtai here since even though we don't want to give them cards, the end game here is also to just counter everything they do. So we could eventually just start recurring the Urtais and prevent them from casting anything that would get them any poison counters. We got Rona into here. As well as a Glissa as a good blocker and Slogurk to start getting value. Our opponent moles twice. It's always a good sign. Oh, almost three times. But they do find the turn one crawling chorus. We'll play Lance Go. Into turn two, Scrolls Hive. Thankfully, we picked up Rona here, which should serve as a all right blocker. Let's hope they didn't have a Serum Snare or anything like that. It seems like they didn't. No attacks. We'll play in. Uh, I think it's safe to play into here. We want to start getting as much value as soon as possible. And they're not really close to being able to activate the seed core, so yeah, we'll play out the NT. Get rid of one of these untapped lands. Get rid of the one that doesn't produce green. Just in case we get rid of the plaza. Play out NT, pass it over to the opponent. So now we could just draw discard with Rona on end step and start getting lots of value. Ooh, but we see an Annex entry. Not what we wanted to see. Pretty lucky draw from the opponent. We'll draw discard. Finding a relic. Getting rid of Sokens on. Getting rid of a plaza, sadly. We'll block here. Now they have the seed core active. But a good pickup here on the Urtai should. Oh, I guess we didn't get rid of the plaza. Now oh, it's until your next end step. I thought it was until end of turn. So here we'll play Glissa and look to play Urtai next turn. 
get rid of the annex and make even more blockers. They're just top decking, so there's nothing that can like realistically get them just two ten poison counters in the next two turns, unless they like top deck another annex entry. They swing in with a sentry. We'll block that with Glissa. Not sure what they could have here. Oh, a march. That's kind of wasted. That's all right. Because now we could just play the Urtai. We don't even want to play any of these lands. Yeah. Because we want to just use them for Slogurk. So we'll play Slogurk out here. We'll hold up the Urtai. Make a bunch of blockers with Sokens on. That should be game. So our opponent draws here. They have the seed core. They have five attackers, of which one will get rid of. Doesn't attack with the Annex Sentry. So we'll block here, here, and here, meaning all of these will definitely trade. And then they'll probably activate their seed core onto Slogurk, which will buff up by discarding a line, and we'll still have enough land to hold up for a tie. So, yep, they buff up their 1-1. One, one. We'll make a red with Slogurk. Discard the Sokens on. Start making more blockers for future turns. We want to wait to cast the Urtai to the end step so that we don't draw them into any gas. Okay, so they just had a land. Honestly, we will just hold up the Urtai instead. Oh, we can't even cast the Urtai anyway since we tapped the Slogurk and since we lost the Ashod. But, um,. Yeah, we'll hold it up instead, since we don't necessarily need the Rona back all that quickly. We'll instead channel the Takenuma and pick the Ashnut back up. Slogurk set 7-7. Seven, seven. We'll play land for turn. Play out Ashnut again. And look to start swinging with the Glissa. Discard land. Exile a backup Slogurk. We'll play that, sure. Destroy their hive. Play out the Slogurk, because this way we'll just get a bunch more gas into our hand. And just take over the game. GG's. Let's see what we got here. Game one on the play. We have a tap land and an ash nod. I mean, if we hit the second land, we're at a pretty good spot. It means we'll probably be able to swing with Ashnod, try and find land with Inti. But we could certainly do better. Yeah, we'll, we'll find a go for the throat here instead. I think we'll keep that. Putting away the land. Holding up go for the throat turn two. Into something Rakdos. Yeah, we still want to hold up Go for the Throat here, so... And we'll probably not be bouncing too much stuff, so we'll just play the Odawara. Unlocking her blue as well. Rakdos. Block Tithe. I'll remove that. Got a Slogurk on the field. If this sticks around, then... Next turn we could start using the Takenuma. It's a bit risky, but 
has a huge payoff if he sticks. Sadly, does not. We find a Beseju here. We'll play that out. This way, we're holding up both Takenuma and Urtai. Opponent discards a land to the blood. Deep Cavern Bat. We'll counter that. Opponent has land. And to another bat. Excellent. Hits nothing. So we'll just play our land. Start swinging in. Still holding up the Takenuma. And now holding up Plaza to protect our Urtai. We see a Gix. Swing in with bat for a draw. And we'll activate Takenuma on end step. Another blood type harvester. Not the worst. And we'll pick Slowkirk back up. Sweet. Now we can play out Slowkirk and hold up the Sokenzan, creating a bunch of tiny blockers while also buffing up the Slowkirk. We could use those blockers to perhaps stop the harvester we'll see what they do here so bat and harvester yeah we'll channel sokens on here and attempt to block the harvester Logger gets a counter. And we'll block this way. We're okay with losing the spirits either way. But now if they were to remove anything, the blood tithe the blood tithe will die either way. They have a slight misplay. Could have taken outer spirits. Kumano, double Kumano. And we see the third harvester. We draw land. Not ideal, but I think we still have a an alright board state here. Let's see what they use the Kumano triggers on. Single swing with a bat. Gix is doing his best impression at a uh, Phyrexian Arena. Which is a great a pretty great impression, considering now he'll start drawing two cards instead. We see Fairy Dream Thief surveils a deep cavern battleway. Into something else, perhaps. Into discarding a land with the blood. Now we're looking to pick up something here. Liliana makes a sacrifice, perhaps. They discard their last heart their last card which was just the land
pass it to us. I'll swing at Liliana with the slow kirk. Maybe they'll take a bad block. All right, not the worst. We'll deal two to Liliana. Hold up this go for the throat and use it to get rid of the gigs, preventing any further guard draw. Hopefully it also means they swing in with etchings here, which we can block with our spirits and our tie. Animate their land. Swings with the team. Yeah, we'll let them discard draw. Land. So we'll block a little different here. We'll do like this. Perhaps if we shoot down the gigs or no, we want to preserve as much health as possible. Even if they keep this restless fence, it's okay. So we'll block like this, take care of the fairy dream thief, and protect our Urtai. So that if they minus two with their Liliana, we'll at least keep a creature around, which can attack back into her. They wouldn't have drawn two had we just used to go for the throat on the Gix, but then we would have taken three extra damage from the Dream Thief up top. Not sure if that was the right play. But I think preserving life here is important. Since the longer this game goes, the more in control we get. Keep hitting lands, now we're going to start getting value out of Slogurk. I don't think our opponent plays is here, especially now that they've lost kicks. We're looking at our graveyard, yeah we have three lands we can pick up. I think they're trying to figure out whether it's right to have a sack Slogar cure or not. We'll pick our lands back up. And they play another Liliana. They make a sack. But thanks to the Sokans on here. We'll be able to swing right back at her. We could play the Goose Mother here for X equals 1, making her a 3 3. Sure. And we could still channel the Sokans on, taking care of Liliana. We're once again back in control. So our opponent finds another Gix. We'll block with both our creatures so as to prevent any further draws. Sweet, and our opponent taps out to draw another card. They hit land. They hit a stalker, which will become a 2-2. Two -two. Inti's a great pickup. We'll play her out. And we don't have quite enough mana to get the Slogurk out here again. So we'll just wait to pick him up with Takonuma on the end step. We're probably looking to bounce the Gix once they enter combat. I 
They have a chance to activate their stalker. But we'll get value either way since we could respond to the activation. Swing with gigs. Swing with the stalker. We'll double block the stalker, so we could definitely get rid of it. They'll most likely take out into here. So they'll activate their stalactite stalker targeting NT. We'll respond to that by bouncing their gigs. Exiling an Odawara. And we'll channel the Takenuma to pick Slogurk back up. Picking up a Relic of Legends through NT, which will be just great. When it plays Shieldred, and we find backup Slogurk. So we'll play Slogurk, we'll play the Odawara to trigger the slime, play a Relic, and even if we play the second Slogurk, it won't be enough to hold up anything else here, so we'll just pass it over to the opponent. No swings for the opponent. Draw for turn. Find another Takenuma. We'll cash it in here. Since then we could potentially play the second Slogurk. But we shouldn't have tapped the Odawara, but it's alright. So we'll Find either Inti or Rona. We can't really get any value out of Inti just yet, so I think it's best to either pick up Rona or Glissa. Tap the Slogurk for mana. Cast the Rona. Pick the Slogurk back up and replay it. Yep. That sounds reasonable. This way we could pick back up the Odawara, Sokanzan, and Takenuma. Keep up the pressure. Or perhaps the plaza is better. Yeah, I already have a backup Slogurk, so we want to look to protect our creatures. Cut down, targeting Rona, but we'll tap her before she's destroyed for blue, so we can cast Slogurk out. And we'll cast the Slogurk. Play Otter Plaza. Pass it over to the opponent. Still in a really good spot, holding up both the Sokanzan and Oduwara, as well as the Plaza. So our opponent discards to activate their gigs. 
sure that resolves. I don't think that's too terrible. They only hit two lands. Two lands for two lands. And we'll just start by bouncing the Shieldred, preserving her health as much as possible, discarding Sokens on, most likely playing her other Slowgurk next turn. Ooh, finding another Sokens on. We'll still go with the original game plan. We'll play our Slowgurk, Legend rule them, pick up Takenuma again, pick up Odawara, pick up Sokens on. We will be using Takenuma here to further discount our channel lands. And we'll pick Corona back up. Keeping our Plaza of Heroes open so that we could activate it. And we'll just pass it over to the opponent. Next turn we could set up a lethal swing. We see Shouldered again. And we'll bounce the Deep Cavern Bat here. Alright, so we're able to untap with the Plaza. That should be game. So they... So we're getting 3 damage in for sure. As well as at least 6, that's 9. Down to 7. Even if they block my Slogurk, that's 10 blocking, deals 5. We can flip the Rona. And that should be enough damage. I guess there's no way to hold up the Plaza. Alright, we can wait another turn. We have enough blockers anyway. Our opponent's last card could be removal, so... I think it's best to just... stay alive while we can. We might even pick up Slogurk. No, it should be fine. They'll activate Gex here again, most likely, but I don't think there's anything they can find that'll be enough to prevent the win next turn. All right, the little deep cavern, taking nothing. We still have the health from the food. A Liliana. And we'll end. That should be game. start gaining here so now here they block with bat in the air to go up to 19 they block with everybody onto slogurk which is 10 so i have 11 damage on board i could grow her for four more making 15 damage not quite enough i am slowly dying to the shieldred Hmm. Bit of a tricky spot. I think we want to once again start recurring the Slogurk. We would have been able to win the game, but we weren't sure if they had a removal in hand. 
think it was best to play it safe. So we'll grab Odawara here, another Odawara, and perhaps a Sokenzon. I think those work best. Just keep going as wide as possible. Right, we'll we'll tap Rona for a blue. Bounce the shieldred. Oh, finally, there you go. So we found a Titania who will start healing us for a bunch and should now finally put this game to rest. And we'll just swing the team at Liliana since now with Titania on the board, there's just no way our opponent can threaten enough damage. We have double land discards here, plus anything we draw discard with uh, Rona, meaning we have at least 8 life. Cut down onto Rona, that's alright, we'll just draw discard. Finding our own cut down, probably won't be necessary, we'll just bend that for now. We see Shieldred again. Opponent can't really swing in here. So I'll just pass over the turn and hopefully realize that they're probably not going to come back from this. Well, against all odds, opponent swings with the team. We will load a war away. Uh, we'll load a war of the children away. Make two more blockers. Finally, get rid of this Gix. Get rid of their land. And chump their Kumano for game. So game two, we're up against some bats, we're up against some shieldreds. We got Gix. Don't really remember what they were using red for. But they probably have some sort of Brotherhood's ends. As well as maybe some red base removal or creatures. Oh, they might be playing Geological Appraiser. That would make a lot of sense. So a lot of their game plan will just depend on some big creatures, which we could most definitely hit with Pilfer. So we'll port that in for now. Oh, uh, we also saw the Harvester, the three Harvesters, of course, which they don't really get hit by Gix's command, so we'll keep that out for now. The cutdown will probably line up well into them, seeing as we saw both bats and the harvesters. Yeah, we'll put those in. Uh, the Seiji won't be necessary. I don't think we'll need as much graveyard hate, but the healing from Titania will definitely be welcome. So we have three cuts to make. I think an Urtai is fine to cut. This was two Slogurks since our opponent's going to be packing a bunch of removal anyway. Uh, we'll run three Solgurks, three, re three Relics. So, game two. On the draw, we have a turn two NT along with a backup NT. That should be fine. We have our mana fixed with the Plaza. Now we pick up Arona, it's pretty good. 
Her opponent has a turn one stalker into a turn two NT. He will discard, making his stalker a 3-3 three, three at the end step, but losing out on a card. We'll play Arona. Looking to not get it removed here, hopefully. So we've seen four lands from opponent. Bitter Triumph. Pays the life. Hopefully our opponent discards here looking for land and misses. I think is our best shot. Oh, they discard a land. Putting a counter on NT. And they find bats. All right, so we're in a really good spot. I'm not sure why they discarded that land. But from here, we'll play the Odawara. And we'll play the Titania, which should start locking up the board. Next turn, we could look to get an Inti out and channel away one of our lands. Oh, they discarded Gix now. Finding a Liliana, we will not block here. Oh yeah, now we can really wreck some havoc. And Arona as well. Oh boy. Okay, so now I think we want to play Rona out. Have them swing in next turn. Odawara away. Something else. I think our best tap is like this. So we'll both gain the life from the Odawara as well as bounce their creature. Should put us in an excellent spot. But if they do have some interaction, might prove a little dangerous. So they do discard, second Gix. Put counter on The NT. Very well. And they find a backup NT. So we'll just elect to bounce their trampling creature, and I don't think we have to block here with the stalker. Since we could just start gaining health by draw discarding with Rona next turn. But when we find a Glissa, pretty great. So we'll play out the Relic. We will play out the Glissa. And we can even play out the Inti here. But I don't think it'll be necessary. I think, yeah, we could have done that. We could have played Inti, tapping Titania and Rono. Since I don't think we're blocking with Titania anyway, I guess we could block the NT with Titania. Even if they give Trample to the Stalactite Stalker here, since Glissa has First Strike, we have favorable blocks. But if they do find a way to get rid of Glissa, it should be game. I guess it wouldn't have mattered if we played out NT. Okay, swings it with NT. Discarding the original one. They hit land, but they lose their NT. That should be the game. We find a land. Oh, this is great. We'll channel the Takenuma. Gain three life and doesn't really matter what we get here. Just pick up another Rona. Gain another two life from the Takenuma mill. Find a go for the throat. Yeah, we could just use this on the Stalker before it does too much. 
draw a discard with Rona. We should have done that after playing Inti, but that's all right. Draw a discard with Rona again. Getting rid, getting rid of Relic. Exiling a land and finding a cut down. And this should hopefully lock up the game. We'll sing with Glissa. Don't think there's many ways for an opponent to find four damage here. Perhaps a land into Shieldred would be great, but a uh, graveyard trespasser won't be quite enough. We find a goose mother now, which we could play for X equals four without tapping any of our creatures. We'll draw this card with Rona, finding an art tie. Which we probably won't need. We'll just get the Goose Mother down and threaten gaining a bunch of health. We'll opt not to discard with NT. Yeah, we have a bunch of lines we could take there. GG's opponent. All right, game one on the play. We see a go for the throat into possibly Relic or Slogurk. This is a keep. We also have an Odawara, which we could uh, eventually channel. We see a Crawling Chorus. Let's see if they plow out any creatures here. We'll let it attack even. Though this isn't the best of spots. Hmm. So they pass it over. They're probably holding up a counter here. I think we'll just... Ooh. Having picked up Glissa, we probably want them to counter here, so we'll play out the Slogurk, meaning we could hopefully resolve Glissa and just wall them off with an excellent blocker. They managed to second poison, they miss on land, which is always good, and we'll attempt to resolve Glissa. Sadly running into a second counter. Opponent hits their third land, finding green. So we're up against Bant Poison. And we see a double chorus. Here we could do Relic of Legends into the NT. Though of course if our opponent has a third counter, that puts us at a very unfortunate spot. But it doesn't seem like that's the case. And we'll pass it over. Here we'll elect not to play land so that we have two Odawaras we could potentially use to bounce the opponent's stuff. They'll take our Inti back into our hand, but I think we can still come back from here. Our poison counters are getting dangerously high, but our opponent hasn't put too much more too many more things onto the battlefield. We see a venerated rot priest. So now we'll we'll still play out the NT. Play it like this. So from here, we have several things. We can go for the throw it onto the Rot Priest. We also have an Odawara and a Takenuma that we could channel. Potentially grabbing out either Slogurk or Glissa. We'll just pass it over for now. I mean, if they have protection for the Rot Priest, they have it. But if they tap out here, you could possibly just go for the throat on it. Or alternatively, they might all out attack, in which case using the Odawara might be best. Let's just see how they play it out. We see a Scrolls Hive. Meeting opponent has already tapped out for the turn. And a pass. 
They choose not to attack. So we're safe to talk Anuma here. Finding a Glissa, excellent. And a Rona, or a Slogurk. I'll pick up Rona, since we could start getting tons of value from her. And we'll also go for the throat, their venerated Rock Priest with their leftover mana. We do get the poison counter, but now we get rid of venerated Rock Priest, meaning they can't threaten to finish the game with some March of Swirling Mist nonsense. Now we'll play the Glissa here. Holding up a plaza. So that we can protect one of our legends. Oh, I keep forgetting to tap Arona for mana before she untaps. Which you can do even if she's summoning sick because of the Relic of Legends. So slight misplay from us. We could have uh, played, us played out Asokans on there. We're still in a good spot. We've got excellent blockers, and we can make many, many more with the Zokans on. While also having ways to bounce their creatures. So opponent will pass it over, and we'll start piling on the value by discarding lands and exiling within T. We find a land. And I think we're good to keep the Odawara in hand. A Slugurk is another awesome pickup. We'll draw this card with Rona. Our opponent casts, bring the ending. That's all right. We discard Ashnod, holding up the Odawara. Find a cut down. We'll just use this now. Get rid of that might. And see what else we find with Rona. Discarding another NT. Finding another land. That's quite alright. We'll also start attacking with the Glissa. To hopefully get rid of the Scrub's Hive. They block with Chorus. So we'll probably look to just bounce that token or anything else they play out. Duelist doesn't have the best of attacks, nor does the second Duelist. Find a Plaza of Heroes. I think we'll we'll discard this extra land away. Exile with Inti. Take care of one of the duelists. And attack with Glissa. Discarding the plaza. So now that she has a now that she has trample till the end of the term, even if they block with her. We can start getting more and more value. So we'll draw, hoping to hit another legend, so as to untap Arona. Go for the throat is excellent, though. We'll play land for a turn. Pass it over to the opponent. We see a Merrick snap. And to destroy evil. Yeah, I think we'll protect the Glissa, since we could use it to destroy the Scrolls Hive. And we'll protect the Glissa by discarding the Odawara. I think now's a good enough time. So this way we could hold up three blockers and not get poisoned any further. Sadly, we exile the Takenuma, but we should still have one in the deck. Yep. Yep, so here they attack with everybody, but it's just... Uh, not so great attack into us. We draw discard. Getting rid of the backup Rona. 
We'll cycle this land away. Finding a cut down. Let's just play out the Glissa. And hold up the cut down. I think that's our best bet. From here we could just hopefully attain some sort of unanswerable board state. Hopefully find a Earth tie that should really lock things up. And Earth tie along with a slow Gurk. First we'll start off by using Rona's draw discard. Finding another cycle land. Still looking for some other legends here. We'll cycle once more. Find Odawara, find Paseju. Paseju's good. We could use that to take care of their Scrub's Hive. Or perhaps the Mirex would be a better thing. Yeah, we'll take care of that. It gets activated beforehand, but now they're really down on blockers, and we finally found our slow Gurk, so this game should come to an end rather quickly. So we swing in with Glissa. We'll elect not to discard. Destroy the hive. And pass it over to the opponent. We'll discard the cutdown away. Finding a Titania for next turn. And we'll channel away Takenuma. Now finding the Urtai. And another one. Which should help us close out the game. So we're into some bent poison nonsense. Let's throw in Paseju, which should take care of lots of the stuff they play. And eventually we'll just be able to nuke their land if we're in control enough. We'll also pick up a Duress to take care of their interaction, as well as a Pilfer. Graveyard hate isn't as important, but I think a cut down does a great job at taking care of annex entries as well as rot priests. We'll take out the go for the throat, since they'd rather go wide and a lot of their creatures are also artifacts. We don't necessarily need the life gain from the life gain from Titania, so we'll take her out as well. Along with one goose mother. And we'll go on to game two. So on the draw, let's see what we're looking at. I'm tempted to keep this. We have a lot of two drops we could draw. That would be great and turn one duress might be worth it. But then again, they're looking to get on the board really early. So I think having early blockers is more important than potentially disrupting their hand. We'll take a all. I think it's best to keep this. We can't cast Slogurk just yet, but we have two ways to interact with their hand now, which can hopefully disrupt their game plan enough to get us to a point where we can cast Slogurk. Sadly, we see a scroll of turn one, already starting the poison clock. 
they swing in. And play a venerated rock priest for their turn. So now we find a cut down. Opponent does have a hold, meaning they could potentially have a March of Swirling Mist in hand. So instead of using the cut down, it might be best to just cast a rest now. Using a cut down, making having us take a poison counter into them. Yep, using their March of Swirling Mist, exiling their second one to protect the Rot Priest and then get two more poison counters is really dangerous, so we'd very much like to deal with the Swirling Mist while we can. So they find their third land. I don't think they'll be playing out their Annex entry. And from here we could take care of the second March of Swirling Mist and get the Rot Priest out of the field. Okay, so they use the Swirling Mist now, meaning we take out the Annex Entry, fair enough. And we'll hold up, cut down. Ooh, this is another interesting choice. So we should have played the land there and tried to cut down their Rot Priest when we could. Because starting next turn, they'll just be able to protect it with Skrelv. But I guess we could just take out Skrelv and just having one singular Rot Priest won't be as much of a problem. We can eventually cast out the Sokanzan and make a bunch of blockers. So I think it's fine to just hold up the cut down and deal with Skrelv. They swing in with both, meaning we can shoot down the Rot Priest. But opponent found another March of Swirling Mist, which will put us at nine poison counters. That's unfortunate. Into another Pofur. Go on to game three. I think we're good to go down Pofurs here. They're too fast in that we can't really disrupt their hand that reliably. We'll instead opt to run a Gix's Command alongside with a Titania. I think that should do the trick. We'll go first. Holding a cut down, turn one. Good way to start it. So long as we hit the third land, we should be able to play out our Rowan on Inti. Nice, we hit a blue land. Meaning we could play Rona out and a Relic of Legends turn 3 into holding up the Baseju. There seems to be a hold, indicating our opponent is probably holding a March of Swirling Mist in hand into a Skrull's Hive. It is thankfully not threatening too soon. Here we'll. Hmm. We'll draw a discard with Rona first. Finding a Glade. Yeah, I think we'll discard the Glade. We'll play out the Sokanzan. Get Inti out. Untap Rona and start generating value with her. This way we can both hold up cut down in case they play an Annex Sentry. As well as exile a card with Inti for next turn. So they do play out the Annex Sentry. Targeting, doesn't quite matter, but targeting Rona will respond by using cut down on the sentry, which will cause their ability to fizzle. And on end step, we'll draw discard with Rona, getting rid of this useless land. All right, so we see three Solgurks. In this case, we'll play out the Relic Legends and top our creatures to cast out the Exalt Slogurk. And we'll draw a discard with Rona, hoping to find land. We don't necessarily want to play the Besaju here since it 
lines up so well into their team. So getting a Takanuma isn't the worst, since we can start growing her Slogurk. We can also look to tap on tap again. Yeah, we'll do just that. So we'll cast this in T. So we have two untapped legends, and now we're holding up the Baseyu, which we could honestly just use now. Let's just draw a discard with Rona first. Finding an Odawara. We'll get rid of the Slogurk. Finding another land. Could have used that earlier, but that's all right. And yeah, from here, I think we're safe to just hold up the Baseyu. We could even use it right now to take out the Skrull's Hive, but I think holding up Odawara as well might prove useful. We'll have enough blockers starting next turn anyway to block these two mites. What might have also been a better line was to keep the other Slogurk in hand and just drop the Odawara, commit to taking Skrull out, and that way our Slogurk gets three counters, meaning we could bounce it and grab three lands while keeping two Slogurks in hand, but it's okay. I'd rather keep the flexibility. So Serum Snare targeting in T. They won't proliferate anything. So we'll just bounce their token and maintain poison off the board. As well as exiling within T. Finding another Rona. So we saw a planes from a opponent last turn, and now we're seeing an island. I don't think these decks tend to run forest since their only green card is um, the Rot Priest. So we'd be pretty safe in destroying one of these. Starting to get them rid off white. But we could hold off on that a bit. Let's try and get the NT on the board. Draw a discard with Rona first. Hoping to find land. They might have a bring the end here, but we could stop that. We've been land here since Glissa is still an excellent blocker. Why don't we find a Duress to help us pick apart their hand? Serum Snare on Slogurk. They still have nothing to proliferate. I guess it doesn't really matter if we activate the Slogurk instead. And that's game. Yeah, I don't think our opponent could really come back from here since we'll just pick apart their hand be able to probably destroy their hive they don't have quite enough to replay Slogurk actually well we slightly misplayed one thing we could have done is in response to the serum snare tap or Slogurk making one extra mana, and then using the mana from tapping in T and the Relic, replay Slogurk anyway, and then hold up whatever lands the slime picked up. So yeah, that's game three. Welcome back to the post-game wrap. I'd like to start this segment off by apologizing for some less than optimal play during the first two matches, as I was still getting used to how the deck plays and the different lines that are available to you. But I think you could really see the deck shine starting from the third match onward. We still took the win, thanks to some misplays from our opponents. I think uh, in the first match, there was a game where, or there was several games where our opponent uh, just kept using March of Swirling Mist on our creatures when they had a Rot Priest on board and they could have just used it on the Rot Priest itself to ensure poison counters. And uh, during the second match, I remember that there was a uh, missed block where our opponent could have taken out two of our 1-1 blockers 
but uh, just instead lost a creature. So both those matches might have gone a little differently had our opponents also played a little bit more optimally. But I think we still had a great day overall, especially on the third match, once again against uh, Bant Poison. We really took control of all the games and just limited their options, which was especially good to see against a deck that usually ignores all of that you're doing and just poisons you for the victory. That'll be all for the post-game wrap. I hope you enjoyed the video, and once again, thank you for watching.